Okay, so they ask us again to find intervals of increase and decrease for this thing, and any local extrema, and as you've seen, we need a derivative to do any of that stuff, so away we go. This is a quotient, which means the quotient rule is going to kick in when we try to do its derivative. The derivative is going to be the bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom all over the bottom squared. Now we can clean that up quite a bit. This entire first section vanishes because it's a, it's something 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 times zero and then we get negative 2 over x minus 3 all squared. So that's our derivative, and when we're looking for critical numbers, meaning the interesting points on the derivative, the two things we look for are places where this equals 0, or places where it's undefined. Well, if you look for places where it's 0, it's a short search. You get negative 2 over x minus 3 all squared equals 0. You multiply both sides by the common denominator, and that gets you negative 2 equals 0, which is impossible and gibberish, and so that means stop. There are no places where this thing equals 0. But there is a place where it's undefined, because if the denominator goes to 0, we get division by 0 and the whole thing blows up. That means if x equals 3, our derivative is undefined, and that makes 3 a critical value. We want to know what's happening at and around 3. So, here is a number line, here's 3, we know something neat might happen in its vicinity. And let's see how our derivative behaves if we're a little bit below 3, right on 3, or a little bit above 3. If we're just below 3, let's say if x equals 2 just for to have a number, our derivative would be negative 2 over 2 minus 3 all squared. That's negative 2 over 1, after you square it, equals negative 2. In other words, it comes out negative. The derivative is negative to the left of 3. If we're exactly on 3, we get negative 2 divided by 0 squared, which is undefined. And if x is higher than 3, I'll use x equals 4, but you can use 10 or pi or whatever you want, if you do the derivative, you get negative 2 over some positive thing squared. That's negative 2 over a positive. It comes out negative again. So this is a function that is decreasing. Then it's undefined for a second, and then it's decreasing some more. So for intervals of decrease, we could say this function is decreasing from minus infinity up to but not including 3. That's the left hand interval, and also from 3 up to plus infinity. We can't say it's decreasing right at 3 because we do not know what the derivative is there. The function might go vertical. I Honestly, I'm not exactly sure what this function looks like, but here is an example of a way that it could be decreasing everywhere and vertical in one little spot. It could have kind of an s-bend here and go vertical right in the center. There are a couple other shapes that can do this, such as a, you know what, I'll bet this thing looks like a hyperbola, come to think of it, so it's going to look more like an arc like this, and an arc like this, so decreasing, decreasing, decreasing. The function is undefined at 3, so there's a little blip where it doesn't exist, and then when it reappears, it's still decreasing, 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 so this, and I should have seen that sooner, is the general shape of our function, and this explains how it can go down, vertical, down some more. So those are the intervals of decrease. It has no local maxima, and it has no local minima, because there's no place that it reverses direction. It's decreasing everywhere.